So today in this video, I'm gonna be adding another battery bank to my solar trailer. Now I have had a few occasions where I've gotten to about 30% battery capacity with a cloudy day and the air conditioner running, we are getting into hotter temperatures. So I foresee the air conditioner running throughout the night, whereas right now it's kind of just cycling off through the night. So it's not using the full power of the AC unit. So I'm gonna be adding another bank to this trailer, which is gonna give me another 5.8-ish kilowatts. So in total, I should have around 11.75 kilowatts once I add this second battery. And this here is the second battery bank that I'm gonna be adding to the original one that I have powering this trailer. So in order to connect this, I need to bring this first battery up to 100%, which right now we're sitting at about 75% state of charge. So once this gets brought up to full, then I'm gonna make the connection to my second battery. Uh, right now I have the air conditioner turned off. I'm trying to utilize the sun as much as possible. So it is warming up in here. We're sitting just below 30 degrees Celsius inside the trailer. This battery box is still only at about 26 degrees. The heat hasn't hit inside the box yet. So hopefully this can get charged up without it getting any hotter in here. Uh, once everything is leveled out at 100, I'll make my connection and fire on the AC again and cool it back down in here. So yeah, for right now, I'll just show you guys how I put this box together and then I'll come back and make the final connection once you guys see how I made the box. Uh, I've got my eight cells here. These are 230 amp hour cells. I've ordered them off of Alibaba through a distributor called Bazin, Shinjin Bazin. And this is their branding here. This is Bazin Company. Uh, this is my second batch of batteries I've ordered from them. So haven't had an issue. These batteries have already been capacity tested and they've also been run a few times. So they're great in the sense that they're all matched appropriately. They all pull capacity. Actually, they pull above capacity. So now I've had these sitting around for, you know, probably about four or five months now, not doing anything. And with lithium iron phosphate, it's better to actually have them in use. And I need more days in my solar trailer of days of autonomy. So I'm gonna be adding in another roughly 5.8 kilowatts worth of storage into my solar trailer and i'm going to be putting it all into another battery box this one here is a little bit smaller so i'm not going to have my main disconnect on it and i'm not going to have a pre-charge resistor i'm just going to have an anderson connector hanging out the side here for my connection and then i'll just be able to add it to my solar trailer without any problems so i'm going to go through start to finish of how i'm going to set this up so this is going to be a 24 volt pack so I'm going to run them in series of one in parallel and then eight in series, which is going to give me um, my, I believe it's 25.6 volt nominal rating. So to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up. Now, Dally makes a really great BMS. Uh, it's very beginner friendly. So basically, you have your B negative and your P negative. Your B negative is going to be hooked up to your battery. Your P negative is then going to become your actual negative and opposed to the terminal on the battery and everything is going to run through here these balance sensing cables they're going to detect the voltage on all the cells and when it charges up to the top end it's going to balance them out if there's any imbalance between them but these cells i haven't had any issues with them i'm going to give them a top balance and then uh, going to put them in my series so again i just using this dally uh, 120 amp bms hook up to one bank, charge these up with the regular charger to full, and then hook them up to the second bank and charge them up to full. So I'll do that now and I'll go through the process of how I'm hooking it up. So basically right now I have one bank of batteries ready for a 12 volt pack. I have my negative, positive, negative, positive, and then opposing on this side. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna start with your balance leads and you're gonna start with your main negative. So this is gonna be my main negative and you have five cables on your balance lead and you always start from your black wire. So this is gonna go on for the main negative and then you work your way up. So this is gonna be second cell, or sorry, first cell positive and then you work your way up. So next cell positive and next cell positive and last but not least, your final main negative. Okay, I'm gonna add in my buzz bars. So this is gonna be my main positive so then this is gonna be series connected here. 
And then these two are going to be series connected. And finally, the last two. Now, it's always good practice to have your buzz bar on the terminal first and then your balance lead cable on second. And I've already gone ahead and put ring terminals onto these. It's a good idea to have a insulated tool because if I do contact anywhere here, I could cause a thermal runaway. So be very mindful of that. Now I'm just gonna loosely tighten up. There is a torque value on these. Don't know it offhand, I'll have to look at the specs. Okay, so that's the installing of the balance leads. Okay, so now I have my balance leads all installed. So I'm gonna hook up my B negative to my negative wire on my battery. Okay, and now I can plug in my balance lead cables. Now sometimes these DALI BMSs, uh, they'll only wake up if you start to put a charge into them. So we'll test the voltage between the negative and the positive. And as you can see there, the, the, the BMS is actually asleep right now. So let's wake her up. So the way I'm gonna wake it up is I'm gonna plug in my charger. This is a charger from Progressive Dynamic. Um, also, Ames has some really good chargers, but this is the one that I've purchased. So for this, I'm gonna make my battery positive connection. Now before, I make my negative connection on my battery charger. I'm going to use a resistor in between. What this is going to do is allow power to transfer into the charger to charge up the capacitors. Because lithium iron phosphate has a very low resistance value, the surge of power and no spark, the surge of power running into the unit um, could actually blow your capacitors inside of your equipment. So it's a good practice just to pre-charge things before you connect them. Okay, I have my connection. So now I'm just gonna plug in the charger to wake up the BMS. And there you can see we have 13.89. So now the BMS is awake and I can show you on the app as well. So I have the Bluetooth connected, which is just through this little Bluetooth dongle here. So the charging is stopped because I'm fully charged. But there you have it, we have 13.9 volts, zero amps going in because we're fully charged already. So that's good. So now both these banks have been charged up. So now I'm gonna disassemble them and then put them all into parallel and hook them up to my bench charger to give them a top balance. And what a top balance is gonna do is balance all the cells out equally, give them all an equal level of charge. And then that way when you hook them up into series, they should all discharge together and charge up together just flawlessly. So first thing I'm gonna do before I start working on this is I'm going to disconnect my balance leads, which will deactivate the BMS, make it safer to work with. Now some people, um, they talk about which connection to make first, whether to make it at the equipment or at the battery. Uh, personally, as long as you're using a pre-charger, I don't think it matters. It does matter if you're connecting or disconnecting lead acid batteries because there is a chance of like a hydrogen buildup. But as far as lithium iron phosphate, I mean, these cells aren't venting. So I don't see really a difference. As long as you just remember to pre-charge your capacitors. If you don't pre-charge the capacitors, you could get a spark. So, I mean, maybe it's best practice just to make your connection at the equipment so your spark is not at the battery in case you happen to be working with lead. Okay, so now I'm going to top balance all my cells. So I need to make this all negatives on one side and all positives on the other. And then we're just going to connect them all. Make sure you have enough buzz bars to, to do this. Now, if you don't have a bench charger to do this, you could just charge up all your batteries and then make this connection and then just leave them. The longer you leave them, the better. So if you leave them for, you know, three days or something, that would be good. And then they will just balance off themselves naturally. So I'm gonna connect on this end for my positive. And then I'm gonna connect on this end with my negative. So I'm pre-charging the bench power supply, so now there's no spark. 
Okay, I just have my amperage turned all the way up and charge up my voltage. 3.65 is perfect. So right now, I'm just gonna leave this on there. Once I get you know below an amp and I'm into the milliamps, at that point, I'm gonna say that these are all top balanced together. You don't have to wait for it to zero out. Like maybe 500 milliamps is good. So right now there's three amps of current running in, balancing out these cells. So I'm gonna leave this run now. And once I get dropped down, then uh, I'll come back and continue building. Okay, while I'm top balancing the cells, I'm just gonna start working on uh, prefabbing some pieces for the battery box. So I'm gonna start using this neoprene here. Uh, this has just got a kind of a sticky surface on one and then a st an actual sticker on the other. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna run three sticks of it. So I'm gonna have one up here, one in the middle and one at the bottom. This is gonna keep the cells separate as well as allow for some thermal break in between. Okay, now I'm just waiting for these batteries to finish top balancing. So I've started working on the battery box a little bit here. So right now I already have the BMS mounted. which you can see the BMS is mounted here. I have my uh, B negative, which is gonna go to my battery, which is gonna be up top here. And then I have my positive wire already set up to run to go to the positive side of the cells. Now I've just mounted the BMS. On the front of the BMS, there is a fan on it. So I've mounted it so that the fan is now at the front of the box here. So if it comes on, I'm not gonna be doing a high discharge rate or high charge rate. So I don't ever expect that fan to come on, but I have the fan here on the front. So here you can see the fan is just at the back. I'm actually off center of the hole a little bit, but that's okay because this cover is gonna hide that. And this cover has just a little thing here for dust and keep things out, which is nice. And that just pops on there. I'm just gonna cut these screw heads off. I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these screws and then cut off this excess. And then out here, this is gonna be where my battery hookup is. So I've got an Anderson connector and I'm just gonna run that there. And basically this is gonna be where my batteries are gonna hook up here. Now this BMS is a little different from the last 24 volt BMS from Dahlia that I had and that I could take off the cable and put my own cable on, but this, this BMS for some reason is, is built differently. So I can't necessarily take it apart and replace the wire like I want to, but this is gonna be fine coming out here into an Anderson connector for my connection. So I'm gonna make that connection now. This is a six gauge wire and a four gauge wire. And this Anderson connector has got four gauge lugs. Um, so I'll be able to crimp this down for the six gauge and I'll be able to crimp it down for the four gauge. So I'm gonna start off with a two gauge, crimp it uh, a little bit at first, and then I'm gonna switch it to a four gauge and do the final crimping on it. And you can see we have a jungled mess, but this'll do, this is perfect. It's not coming off. Put a bit of heat shrink there and then we're good. Now I'm also keeping note which orientation I have these. So you wanna keep them the same. My connection's done here. So I'm just putting some shrink wrap over top. Okay, my two connections are done. It's fairly cool now. This is gonna be the positive side. This is gonna be the negative. So all I need to do is push. Okay, I got the click on the positive and I got the click on the negative. Okay, and there's my Anderson connector. Maybe what I should have actually done was had it below so that this could have been tucked to the side, but that's okay. This will work for me. So I'll have my connection here and uh, yeah, just waiting for these batteries to finish top balancing and then I'll load them inside the box, put some foam in for some shimming and that'll be it. It's getting hot here. Okay, my cells now have been sitting on the charger for probably about five, six hours. So I'm gonna call it balanced out and then any imperfections, I'm just gonna leave it to the BMS to match out the cells because I wanna get this into the box and hopefully tomorrow I'll bring it over and set it up. I'm gonna stop the balancing for now. And I'm gonna disassemble the cells and then I'm gonna put them into two packs of 12 and then together for my 24. So now I've got my cells kind of laid out how they're gonna be in the box with my negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. So now I'm just going to put some of this neoprene down onto the cells. 
Okay, cell number one. Now I'm gonna go through the rest of them. Okay, all of my cells now have neoprene in between them, but there is separation now between every cell. Use a straight edge to make them straight. Now I have this tape here. This is a clear tape with a stranding in it. So super strong tape. It's got some strands in it there, which is gonna keep everything nice and together. There we go, that's one 12 volt battery now. Now, as you can see, it worked perfectly with the neoprene, so the tape's on the outsides there. So now I'm gonna do the same with this battery. And I'm just gonna go around the whole entire thing. we have a 24 volt battery. So now I just need to put my buzz bars on and my BMS, and there we go. So this is gonna be my main negative on this side, my main positive on this side. Oh, that's a tight fit. I'm gonna work on putting some ring terminals on this. Okay, I've got my uh, balance cable all ring terminaled, be a little bit intimidating, but basically all you wanna do, start with your first black and then move through the reds. So I got my first black, that is gonna go onto my negative terminal, but I'm gonna connect my B minus for my BMS, and then I'm going to put on my balance lead. This is gonna be my next red on the string, which is gonna be my first cell positive. Moving down the line, be my second cell positive and just continue all the way through. Okay, I have all of them installed, so now I'm just gonna run through. Negative, first cell, second cell, third cell, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and final. Perfect. I'm gonna try and plug this in. And got it. Okay, so now two things left to plug in is the Bluetooth dongle and the temperature sensor. Temperature sensor is in. I'm gonna tape this down to the cells. And now the Bluetooth module. Okay, now let's um, see if I'm transmitting through the Bluetooth. And we do not have any devices, so I think I need to just add a charge to it to wake up the BMS. Okay, and we have successfully woken up the BMS. Good morning. So now you can see here, now I know this pack is fully charged, so I can change the state of charge. Temperature setting, I'll come back and change that. So state of charge right now is 100%. So now we have 100% and zero cycles. Now the voltage difference between cells is 0 0.005. So this is a pretty well balanced pack. You see all the different cells down here? Uh, that's just gonna show me the variance between them all. But we're looking all good. The only parameter that I'm gonna set right now is temperature protection. So discharge minus 10, charging low temperature three degrees. I'm okay with this, so I'm just gonna leave it. Now normally the, the Dali BMSs, when you do get them, I believe it's set to like minus 40 charging. So you may want to put the Bluetooth on and set your own charging parameters. Okay, now I need to run this positive cable. Okay, so now I'm gonna run through and just tighten this up. So now I need to get some foam. I think I'll leave that for tomorrow. It's pretty late tonight. So I think this is a good start. Right now, this is basically what it's gonna look like from the outside. So I just have my plug-in and then the cells are in the box. So this is good enough progress tonight. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna pick this up. Just gotta put the padding in to keep the cells from moving around and then uh, that's it, I can take it and put it into service. Okay, picking up where I left off. So I'm just gonna put this, all this is is just the regular floor tile. 
that you would use in like your basement or workout area. I'm gonna use that to fill in around the battery. So I'm gonna to get to that and I'll show you the final product. Okay, I've got all the foam wedged in. So as you can see, I got the foam on the sides here, on the back side, on this side, and inside the front here, which is perfect because this battery now will not move from side to side or front to back. The only thing I need to be concerned about is it coming up. So if I was to roll this toolbox onto its lid, this battery could slip up and hit the lid. So I just need to make sure I never roll it over onto its top side. Okay, charging has now stopped on the second, on the first battery bank, sorry, the bottom one. So I am ready to make my connection now. I'm just gonna shut down the grow watt. So I'm disconnecting my PV and shutting down the grow watt. Once the grow watt shuts down, I'm gonna disconnect the battery from the grow watt completely. And then I'm gonna make my two connections. I'm gonna have the app on for the one BMS up here. And the other app I'm gonna connect once the BMS gets activated on this battery. So we'll see what happens. Just waiting for the grow watt to shut down now. Okay, so the grow watt has now shut down. So I'm gonna shut the power off and I'm gonna shut this off as well. So now I'm disconnected the battery from the grow watt, no PV coming in. So now I'm gonna make this connection to the bus bar. And I have nothing happening up there. Okay, so now I'm gonna flick the switch and see what happens. I have 2.2 and the BMS just activated here. Okay, so I have a current sharing right now of about 3.4 amps. So the two batteries right now are settling off of each other. So that's pretty good. So right now these two batteries are connected together uh, minus the grow watt. Current's going down now to 2.6 amps, 2.4. So these are now parallel off of each other. So right now I can fire back on the grow watt. These two will just continue to parallel off of each other. Okay, the grow watt's back on. Now I'm gonna turn back on the solar power. I got it disconnected out here at the pole. Okay, solar's kicking in. Okay, now the solar's back on, so the grow watt's running perfectly fine. So now these two batteries should even out off of each other over time. Now I'm gonna fire back on the air conditioner here cause it's uh, 32 degrees Celsius inside the trailer here. Okay, so I have both battery banks hooked up. Uh, you can probably hear the air conditioners going none too soon, it's freaking hot in here. So now I'm just gonna put the covers back on and then that's it. Uh, gotta reset the grow watt Wi-Fi cause every time the inverter gets shut off, it has problems connecting again to the Wi-Fi, so I'll reset that. And yeah, everything's running back to normal again. But now I have about 460 amp hours at 12 volts worth of power, which is roughly about 11.75 kilowatts of battery storage, which is awesome. So yeah, if you like the video, subscribe and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.